In Venezuela, the situation has rapidly spun out of control, with the embattled socialist president Maduro refusing to admit there is a humanitarian crisis. This as the military prevented aid, including food and medicine, from coming into the country. Opposition leader and self-proclaimed interim president Juan Guaido met with Vice President Mike Pence in Colombia recently. I sat down with retired Lieutenant Colonel Gary Lafort, a professor of international business at American International College, and Tom Malucci, associate professor and chair of the history department, to learn more. Well, Venezuela is a country that is deeply divided and the economy is imploding as well. Uh, there's been hyperinflation for the last couple of years. It's also been ruled by a party that's today known as the United Socialist Party, currently under um, Nicolas Maduro. And um, this party um, first came to power in, um, in 1998 when Hugo Chavez was democratically um, elected to be the president of Venezuela. And um, over the next, I guess, what, 19 years or 20 years now, uh, he, um, uh, he and Maduro um, have consolidated power in the, in the presidency. And so there are a lot of trappings of uh, democratic government. There even is a, um, a uh, national assembly. Um, there are, uh, have been elections, um, at least um, during the Chavez years, that have been called uh, democratic and, and verified as such by outside observers. But there's been a lot of consolidation of political uh, power around the, the presidency and around the United Socialist Party as well. And um, the Venezuela, even um, um, in the um, early years of Chavez, was a very um, a divided country, division about his uh, possible ambitions, division, uh, division also about his um, plans for the um, economy. And um, one thing to keep in mind about Venezuela is that the um, national oil company uh, is very, very important. It, it uh, provides about 95 percent of the um, export income to Venezuela, and Chavez used that money uh, between 2003 and 2009, let's say, to, to finance some very extensive um, social programs, and some observers credit him with doing things like reducing the poverty rate. Uh, uh, then, unfortunately, um, because you have an economy that's largely based around one commodity, uh, when the prices began to, to weaken, all of a sudden the Venezuelan co economy got into trouble. And when prices really uh, fell about 2014, um, Maduro, his successor, decided that he was going to basically print money in order to try to spend his way out of the, the problem. And that's what's caused the, um, caused the hyperinflation. I should also point out Chavez is very charismatic and had a lot of um, uh, kind of personal appeal. Maduro, his handpicked successor, does not have that. And so that's one reason also why Maduro is in, um, is in trouble right now. But you have humanitarian aid coming in, um, and that's being blocked by Maduro. You see the, the footage of people running to these buses mm -hmm. and then being burned right in front of them. Right. Um, I mean, it's, it's a tragic situation for people on the ground who are hungry, who need medical supplies. Correct. And the reason why um, uh, Maduro is doing that, he's making the argument that there is not a humanitarian crisis in the country, uh, that it's an action on the part of the United States uh, to... Uh, uh, create sort of the Trojan horse that gives the opportunity uh, to uh, eventually overthrow his uh, his government. So he has strongly resisted it with force. Now, he was elected last year, sworn in in January, and the self-proclaimed president, uh, who is now out of the country, uh, Juan Guaido, uh, met with um, Vice President uh, Mike Pence in Colombia. So, right, he's the, uh, yeah, so he's the opposition leader um, who is outside of the country and saying to, he, he will be coming back. Well, he's in. actually so, seized power. Well, he seized power in that he has declared himself the interim uh, president, uh, which obviously Maduro doesn't uh, right. agree with because he sees himself as the duly elected uh, president, and since he's in control of the, the governmental institution, you know, has had a much stronger voice uh, than, uh, um, uh, than uh, Don Guado. So what's the next step for him? If he were to come back, obviously he could face arrest or, or worse, correct? Well, I was reading in the, uh, the news today that uh, after this past weekend, he did leave the country. He was, he was under orders not to leave the country. He left the country to be part of the aid uh, caravan coming into, uh, coming into Venezuela. Uh, he stayed uh, to, uh, until the 25th uh, to meet uh, President Pence. He's since had to talk with them, and now he's returning. And he's indicated that once he's returned, he's going to officially uh, take over uh, the, uh, the government uh, of, uh, um, uh, of Venezuela and, uh, and, see, and see what happens. And how Obviously, will he do that? Maduro's not going to 
end up having that. Because Maduro has the military mm -hmm. on his side, although there have been many defections. Well, I think um, the oil sanctions are going to be the key thing here because um, the, the pain is not going to hit right away, but um, the uh, Maduro government has used that oil company in order to uh, pay off its allies and its appointed generals to, to positions in the oil company, which probably was not the best thing in terms of running it as, as a business. But um, that oil company and its profits are very important for keeping the, the military happy. And so what happens when uh, in a few months maybe uh, the revenues really uh, become very, very low? Are they going to remain loyal to him? And until now, uh, Maduro has um, not sick the military on the um, uh, the opposition, at least not currently. There, there were uh, uh, large-scale demonstrations in 2015 and 2017 against him, but right now he's kind of holding off. But the question is going to be, what happens when Guaido comes back in the country? Right, but he but he is going after them as far as the the humanitarian aid, and you can that see the clashes. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. You know, I know they're using rubber bullets, yes. rubber um, bullets but, but certainly causing yeah. injuries, and, and there were some reported deaths as well. I know Pence had talked about increased um, and toughening up the sanctions that are currently on the country. Is that something that's going to work? Well, it's like anything else. It's uh, it's over time um, uh, because it's already having an economic crisis on the c c country from a humanitarian point of view. Of view. Uh, the big question is when they start cutting off the oil supply, the source of revenue, how long can uh, Maduro continue to maintain military support? One reason why he's been able to do, do that so far is that he's been increasing uh, the pay scales of some of his soldiers. He was giving its key officers, uh, you know, key uh, positions in his government, and that's been sort of enticing them to continue to support them. But as the humanitarian crisis continues, as in the case of the, um, the, uh, the border situation this past weekend, more and more of the military, at least at the uh, middle grade officer level and the uh, soldier level, is starting to question, you know, what's happening and starting to desert. And as more and more that that happens, then obviously um, Maduro's situation becomes more tenable. I read uh, a few articles, and we were discussing this before, of uh, people who are from Venezuela um, who were commenting on, you know, some of the politicians in the United States who have, you know, socialist policies and ideas. And uh, and one uh, person said, "Hey, come to Venezuela to see what socialism looks like." Um, would you say that's a, a fair assessment? And do you think it's it's smart for politicians to lean that far to the left with these policies? I think it's a bad comparison. I also think it's come up because of uh, the fact that the um, presidential election cycle has started again, and we have a bunch of new uh, Democratic uh, politicians in particular who have been talking about um, democratic socialist policies. I, I think Venezuela definitely does have a socialist um, economic policy, but at the same time it had a nationalized oil industry since the 1970s, and there are other countries around the world who have um, used state oil industries to build large sovereign wealth funds and to diversify their economy. And so I think um, it's not simply a question of socialism, it's also mismanagement and criminality um, as well, you know, uh, using the money from the oil revenue for payoffs. And there's also been talk about uh, Venezuelan involvement in things like the drug trade, um, for example. So um, I think it's a, um, you know, a klepto state uh, as well, and I, I don't know if that's a, an exactly perfect um, comparison. Um, I say that especially because some of the proposals, like you know, raising the marginal tax rate, um, wouldn't have seemed so radical in this country in the 1950s in the midst of the Cold War. What does Venezuela do from here? You used to have this very rich country in Latin America, and now you have you know people really, really struggling. What do you think uh, the next step is going to be? Well, I mean, uh, I think uh, President Maduro, if he wants to uh, stay in office, has to recognize the fact that he's got to open the country to foreign aid uh, because the populace in general, roughly. 30 million people are really at the, you know, uh, the critical stage. And when they see the aid being available and then the government uh, not making, standing in a way from them getting to it, you know, jeopardizes that, that position. Um, I think, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of negotiations going on. I know the United Nations is uh, in the process of uh, passing a resolution. I'm afraid it'll probably be watered down to some extent as to what will be done because Russia and uh, China are both on the side of Maduro uh, and they have veto power. Uh, there's also the uh, Lima group uh, that met on Monday that's looking what is the possible ways uh, to bring about a peaceful uh, solution short of the use of military force, which I don't think will, uh, will happen unless there's some type of a red line that's crossed that hasn't been established yet. I think it'd be very unwise if the U.S. Um, 
invaded or, or uh, even began to push too hard because part of the ideology of uh, Maduro and Chavez before him was, of course, uh, um, kind of anti-American. The, the, even though Venezuela has always been a very um, pro-American country in terms of popular um, opinion, um, uh, part of the appeal of their foreign policy has been um, the, the idea that, you know, El Yankee is kind of interfering in, in the region. And I don't know what the consequences would be if it seemed as if uh, the United States was organizing some kind of uh, armed intervention. So uh, I'm just kind of hoping that the um, international solidarity against the, the Maduro government and also the economic sanctions are going to work.